In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to get the best results out of the $15 Harbor Freight Gun when spraying clear coat. This is Paint Society. Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize a $15 Harbor Freight Gun to lay down a glass-like finish. I'm gonna show you it right now. This is what you need to do with this gun to make it optimized and spray very well. This is the fan control, okay? It can go all the way to the right or all the way to the left. Leave this all the way open. That way you have a bigger fan, okay? This is your fluid. We want this all the way open as well. Let me show you how. Let's take this trigger. We're gonna take this knob, back it all the way out to the point where it almost comes out. Hold down your trigger, turn it to the right until you can't turn it anymore. Okay, make sure you keep on holding that trigger just like this. This is now wide open, okay? When it doesn't move anymore. We have the gun set at wide open. What that means is we have the maximum amount of fluid moving out of this paint gun. And this particular paint gun, that's how you need to set it up. Now you need a regulator. Well, you can use any regulator, but this is a 3M1. Now we're gonna pop that on here. This is gonna tell us what our PSI is. We wanna use a pressure that is gonna atomize the paint as well as possible. And this is what we'll be spraying. It is a Corvette top off of a 2016 Corvette. It's already got its base coat on. It just needs a mirror-like finish to match the factory. And we're gonna do it right now. So this Harbor Freight gun does not atomize amazing. So we need to compensate as the painter. Here's how we're gonna do it. Instead of coming with a distance around four to five inches, we're gonna have to move a little bit closer and we're gonna have to move a little bit faster. So now instead of being a little bit more distant and slower, we are gonna have what we call tight, close passes, all right? And we're gonna follow around 75 to 80% overlap. Because it doesn't atomize as well, we're gonna have to put a little bit more material on the panel to help it flow out. And I'm not concerned about my first coat. It might not look amazing, but we're gonna slam it down right now. Wow, in real time, first coat just laid down. Looks amazing, really, really good for our first coat. We're gonna allow this to flash. Did you see how fast I was moving with those passes? I'm changing the gun style to work for me. I'm using it to my advantage. Look at that gloss off of the first coat. And on this particular job, I'm using Montana Clear, Montana Big Sky, but I'm also using the proper hardener. This is an 85 degree hardener. Let's check out what the temperature is in the booth right now. Checking out our temperature in the booth, it is 89 degrees. So I'm using a proper temperature for my job. Let's say I was not using the proper temperature. I was using a 75 degrees hardener. That would means we would get orange peel. It wouldn't flow out as nice. We're gonna allow this clear to flash off for a good five to 10 more minutes. We'll lay down that second coat. First coat's all flash, and we're ready for the second coat. Flash means all the solvents have released from the paint. It's ready for the second coat, which we're gonna lay on a little bit wetter. Now, the, what we're gonna do on this pass is we're gonna go even tighter with our passes, more overlap, but we're gonna move a little bit slower. We're really gonna put that clear on. Now that the first coat is like a grip coat, it's gonna be sticky. It's gonna be ready for that second coat to just grab into it. Let's go, let's get started. Let's lay down that second coat.
wow, this thing looks amazing. I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. Now, I got a couple little dust particles right here in the middle. And what I want to do is I want to add on a third coat. It's not always a good idea to put three coats on, well, if you don't follow the flash times. I wouldn't recommend more than three. I always put on two. But in this case, when it's a flat panel, you're going to have less of a chance of running. But what you need to do is you need to wait double the time that you waited between coat number one and coat number two. You're going to want to give this at least 15 minutes. The reason why, you got so many solvents that need to come out and we don't want to trap them. If we trap them with this third coat that we lay down, what's going to happen is we're going to have, again, little solvent pops, little dots throughout your whole entire panel, and we don't want that. So let's find something to do for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back in here. Take a look at some of the things in my cabinet, some of the current guns I'm using. Um, well, we're using a W400, awesome, awesome sealer gun. The Segola 4600, top clear gun. Also another top clear gun that has climbed to the top of my list. The Walcom um, HTE clear gun, 1.2, super lightweight. I gotta tell you, it atomizes so, so well. I also got that paired up with the uh, base coat gun. If you wanna spray metallic and you're scared, this gun does the hard work for you. Of course, the LPH 400, one of my top clear guns, but I gotta say, it's getting replaced very quick once again by that Walcom one. Also, another quick, easy gun that I've been using a lot, the 3M gun. I gotta say, I was not a fan at first, but I'm changing my mind a lot. Let's head over to the toolbox. I'll show you some of the retired guns that I've been using. Uh, coming into the drawer, this was my Techna Copper. This was one of the first guns I ever got. You can see it's got a lot of wear and tear on it. Uh, I retired it for now. It's uh, not spring grade, probably needs a rebuild kit. Another fan favorite is the Astro. Now this gun is around 115 bucks and it's super lightweight, atomizes well, and I love the spray pattern on it. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking, the WS400, this gun is $800 around, seven to $800. Don't use it anymore. Um, a little bit hard to get set up, a little bit on the big side, a little heavy once you get it uh, with a full uh, quart of clear over a hood, not what you wanna be holding. Still an amazing gun, but retired it for now, uh, not too interested in using it at the moment. DA's, this is a 332nd DA, so it's a little bit finer for your finer finishes, opposed to a 316 for mud work, that type of thing. You wanna use this for before uh, paint and buffing. It's gonna leave a nice smooth finish. It's been about 15 minutes. Let's go lay on that last coat. After three coats, this is the finish we're looking at. Take a look at how amazing and how flat it is. Yes, the third coat will help out a lot, but only if used the correct way, you can get an amazing glass-like finish. Now, is there a couple pieces of dirt here and there? Yes, not a perfect finish, but that's why they have sandpaper. That's why they have buffers. We can go ahead and denib those and make it look super, super beautiful and super OEM. Take a look at this finish, okay? I don't want to deceive you. It does look really this good in person. Beautiful quality finish, $15 spray gun. Can you believe that? Well, let's allow it to flash. Let's see what it really looks like in the morning. Next morning, let's check it out. Did we lose any gloss? Did it retain its shine? Well, if we look at it, it still has a very, very, very good shine. We're very, very happy with it. Now, as I look around the panel, we still have a couple little dirt nibs here and there, but a super flat finish. So with this finish, we don't need to sand the whole entire panel and buff it. All we have to do is go around to each little dirt nib, give a little sand, a little buff, and then she is good to go. I'm gonna show you that right now. Now it's very simple, we're gonna use a toll cut. I'm gonna use a 1200 because it's really gonna flatten out that nib. And all we have to do is go right to the nib. We have a 
cluster of a few right here. So as we put it over on this nib, we can see that it starts to flatten out the top of it. We're gonna to continue to do that until the nib is completely level. If we take a closer look, we can see right in the center that the nib is starting to flatten out. If we take a look, there's one right here. You can see it in the light. So we're gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and the same thing, we're gonna flatten it out as well. You'll keep sanding until it's completely flat. If we move across the middle, there's a couple big ones right here. So let's go ahead and take our sandpaper once again. And the reason why I like this is because it really keeps it small. We don't have to worry about sanding too much and wasting too much time buffing. We're localizing the dirt nib and keeping it within just a couple inches. And we have a couple more guys right here. Go ahead and flatten those out. Within just a few seconds, they're completely flat. Now they need to be refined because this is 1200, so we'll use a 2000 on a mini DA. For this, I have this mini DA from Cornwell. It's a three inch, and I'll be using the Eagle Abrasives Mini Disc 2000. I always like to finish with a DA machine, at least a softer, smoother scratch for the buffer to buff. We'll then follow that up with a little bit of perfected buffing compound and our perfected pad. We'll follow that up with a little bit of polish just to take away any of those scratches. It is possible to get a good finish out of a $15 gun. And we're gonna discuss, is it really worth it to have a $15 gun? Is it a good gun to keep in your arsenal? Should it be your main gun? A while back, I did a video on this gun and I gave it a 3.5 rating. And a lot of you guys were like, what? Well, it came out so good. Well, this time I still gave it a 3.5 rating and there's a reason why. Well, I did have a good finish, and we know we can get a finish out of most guns if we know how to manipulate them properly. But this is only really the second time that I am using this gun, and I'm looking at it, and it's already starting to deteriorate. So my rating goes into much more than just the sprayability, but how well is it made? How well is the use of it? How easy is it to use? I can tell you that a professional can pick up this gun and probably do okay with it, but a beginner is gonna struggle much more. So a beginner with a much better gun, well, might have better results, but a professional might know how to use this as well. When using a gun, it's a little bit difficult. The grip is not really the best. It's a little bit heavy and it's not really a soft trigger. Nothing to really be worried about. If it's your first gun, why not? Go and grab it, give it a use, paint a whole car with it. In the end of the day, it's only $15. Well, besides the fact we had a really good finish and well, the future owner of this vehicle is gonna be really, really happy with their top and the way it looks. And I hope you learned something from the video. If you guys wanna check out the merch store, head over to paintsocietystore.com. Got a lot of merch and if you wanna support the channel, that's a good way. Also, if you have a lot of questions, you can go over to paint.society. That's my Instagram and send me a DM and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.